Good morning, everyone. We are Delta Design Group, and we are pleased to present you 1262 Ogden Lane in North Liberty, Iowa. What you'll be seeing today is a three-bed, is a three-bed, two-bath home sitting at 2668. Apologies. So what you'll be seeing today is a three bed, two bath home sitting at 2668 square feet. With this home, you're looking at a six, six month build time and a return on investment of 25.9%. Now I'd like to introduce you to the team here at Delta Design. We have myself here, Abel Turbiartes, Kyle Schmidt, Colton Kauser, Jake Song, and lastly, Caroline Smith, as she will continue with market analysis. Thank you. Johnson County is the second fastest growing county in the state with a 20% growth rate for the past 12 years. They have a population of 150,000 individuals, primarily consisting of a younger demographic with the average age being just over 30 years old. Here they have 65,000 jobs in supply and approximately 70% of Johnson County's population are actively in the workforce. With the presence of a Big Ten University that includes a world-class hospital and a medical research facility, the top occupations are healthcare and education services. Here, on average, homeowners make 63,000 per year and have a 19.4 minute commute time. Johnson County has an aging housing stock, half of which have been built since the 1980s. There are 2.37 people per household, and most homes only sit on the market for 34 days. Here, we are comparing the average price per square foot of homes in North Liberty, Johnson County, and Iowa as a whole. We created our target market of young but established individuals that live in either Cedar Rapids or Iowa City who are looking for a home to grow into over time. After looking at our data and reviewing the data of our competitors, we created a price proposal of $169 per square foot. Now on to residential development areas. Chora Meadows has a low lot cost, but is in an undeveloped area and has a daily commute time of 23 minutes. Tamarack Ridge is within city limits and only has an average commute time of seven minutes, but the average lot cost is more than double what homeowners here make. That is why we decided on Greenbelt Trail. It is located in North Liberty, an already established area. It has an average commute time of 12 minutes, which is under the county's average commute time. The average lot cost for various lot types is 90,000, and homeowners here make an average of 96,000. This is the ideal area to live because it has the number one school district in the, in the county, Iowa City Community School District. It's a mix of urban and acreage with easy access to local parks, and it feeds into two economic hubs, Iowa City and Cedar Rapids. Now I'm handing it off to Jake to talk about our design. <clears throat> when reviewing comparables in the area, we noticed an oversaturation of five bed, three bath homes, and upwards of four hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. <throat> uh, for this for this uh, neighborhood, we chose lot forty-seven, which is a walkout lot. And while being slightly more expensive than some of the other lot types offered in the neighborhood, we thought it would help us sell our home because uh, home buyers statistically favor homes that have walkout basements. We also wanted to offer something that the uh, the development desperately needed, which was a starter home that allowed a new family the opportunity to live in a neighborhood as desirable as this, but at a, com at a uh, competitive price that they can afford, while also giving them a home that allows them to grow into over time as their family size increases. Our floor plan has three key features. First, all of the public spaces are arranged in a modern open concept. Second, has a large master suite, which makes it even more desirable to prospective home buyers. And finally, um, <clears throat> has a semi-finished basement that allows that homeowner to finish it later on as their, as their family size increases. There we go. All right. Um, <clears throat> here at Delta Design Group, we believe that the end user experience is very important. We treat each home with site-specific attention by running it through a series of energy simulations, which inform design decisions. Then those design decisions are combined with sustainable building practices and Energy Star appliances to create a more improved end user experience. Now I'd like to turn it over to Colton for project management. Thanks, Jake. So how do we get from that design to the finished product? Well, we've got a great design. We've got a semi-custom home that is tailored to our market. We're using 
uh, regionally standardized materials and finishes. So whenever we order our materials at the beginning of the project, we know they're coming in on time. Secondly, we've got great relationships. We know at the end of the day, if all general contractors were on a level playing field, it would come down to who has the best relationships. We cultivate these relationships by putting safety at the forefront and then obviously um, developing communication through our project manager and superintendent. And since we have a great design, strong relationships, we're able to hold a high standard that has been coming to known throughout the region through our subcontractors, inspectors, and protective, uh, prospective home buyers. Moving into our site logistics, as you can see, it's fairly simple. We've got our dumpster, Porter John, and washouts located by the road for ease of access, and our material laydown will be in the front of the house, and that will move in the house as construction progresses. Now to talk a little bit about our schedule. So whenever Delta Design is considering building in an area, we go through a feasibility study where we do a market analysis and then we go through HOA approval. Once our feasibility study is complete, then we begin with our schedule. A few notable things about our schedule is starting with site work, foundation, and framing. We've got some contingency built into our schedule because we know weather delays are prominent. And then once our those tasks are complete, then we move into a little bit less contingency to where we can uh, rock out production more. Now I'd like to pass it over to Kyle for marketing. Thank you, Colton. We presented you with our in-depth market analysis, our unmatched design strategies, and our high quality project management practices. Now let's get down to business. And understanding that the average home in Johnson County sits on the market for 34 days, we have developed two key marketing strategies. The first of which is our soft marketing. This is based on our high reputation and utilizes our general ads and as well as our social media to inform home buyers who we are as a builder and the homes we build. Secondly, we have our hard marketing. This would be introduced in May 2023 and is particular to this home specifically. This utilizes our targeted web searches as well as this virtual tour, which you can try here with our QR code. This allows potential home buyers to view our home prior to its ever full construction, which we believe is a competitive advantage in this market. Looking to our financials, we've evaluated a total cost of $353,000. This includes a lot acquisition of $82,000 and total direct construction costs of $271,000. With this, we have worked with our local bank to establish and secure a construction loan at 7.98%. We will utilize a 15% construction loan method, draw method, and this will have six key payments of 15% early on in the project and 10% at closing. This allows us to stay ahead of our costs, pay our trades on time, and keep that positive relationship which we are proud of. Lastly, looking at our projections, we project that we can sell this residence in June 2023. This would put us at a sheetrock stage, which we're considering substantial completion at 69%. At this point, we would sell the house for $452,000, which is a competitive yet affordable price in the Greenbelt Trail community. At this price, we would have an ROI of 25.9% and a profit margin of 19.9%. Here at Delta Design Group, we understand we work in a constantly fluctuating market. And with that, we've assessed three key risks, <coughs> dates sold, construction costs, and our interest rates. And understanding how each of these may fluctuate and affect our ability to be profitable, we're able to better be a successful company. However, in addition to this, our business model in general protects us from any potential risk. We're an established builder. We understand the costs associated to building in the Johnson County community. Secondly, we're a lean, versatile team. Our team understands their role in the company and we're able to take on projects at a high quality standard. In addition to this, we have outsourced our design to a third party. This mitigates our costs and in turn, our risk. Lastly, as any great company should do, we have built in a budgeting buffer. As times have been good to us, we've been able to put money aside in case of any potential downturn. In summary, we have presented you with a residence that fits the needs of Johnson County. Our home with its unique design and it's un in a desirable location allows our, our home buyer to meet a market of a younger market and sell at a competitive yet affordable price. We thank you for the opportunity to share our latest residents with you, and we at Delta Design Group look forward to continuing to build in the Johnson County community, where our homes are the difference. Thank you. We'll now open it up for questions. Okay. 
Um, first of all, I just want to say that was an outstanding presentation. I mean, really fantastic work, especially considering you guys, are, you know, just had a nap last night. <laughs> um, and so really absolutely fantastic presentation. Um, I'm just going to comment on one little thing here because this is going up um, while we're talking. So I was a, a student participant in not this particular um, competition in a different one several years ago. And we did the same thing you guys are doing right now. We 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 let our renders kind of run in the background because it's it's really a nice feature, especially nowadays in today's market. People want to be able to see this. They're they're expecting it. Customers are expecting it. And so I really like that you guys did that. Um, it's just it's fantastic. So I have um, two questions for you though. The can I do two, you guys? Off the bat. Okay. So, um, well, we were going to do one and then come back, but I want to do two. Okay. So my first question for you is, is you had mentioned that you were outsourcing the design and that you were hoping to have the house um, like under contract basically by the time you were in the drywall phase. So if you're doing all of this pre-marketing, if someone comes to you and they're interested in purchasing this home, what is what is your, um, let's say before that phase, what is your plan for being able to make customization or be able to change things since you don't have the design in-house? Of course. Thank you for the question. We are a semi-custom builder and at the end of the day. And, and so our home, with our market analysis, fits the needs. However, with that, if a home buyer is to buy prior to our projection, we are able to make accommodations for that. However, it would come at a higher price. We would have a markup on not only any um, any, any changes to it, but also we would have a change order fee associated of $200 to that. And so that that's accommodating with it as we were able to make it up to uh, probably about our, our sheetrock stage at this time that any any homeowner to come in, we were able to make modifications. However, it would just come out of premium. Okay, perfect. And then um, the second question I have for you is, so the um, problem description gave you basically a million dollars to work with, right? So what made you decide to, or or had, what made you decide to just use a portion of that and not use the whole amount and be able to make a larger a larger profit on it? This was all driven by our market analysis, by understanding what is built already in the area as well as what homeowners can afford. We decided to take a different turn in which our home fits the majority of the market. We're able to sell that to that younger community, that younger demographic that we are seeing. And at that affordable price, we're able to get in that desirable location. So why not build two instead of just one? Why not build two? It, ultimately, we have a company. If you look at our, our annual projections, we are building several homes. And, and so we were able to build a secondary home at this time. However, we were presenting this home on Ogden Lane. Perfect. Thanks. Really good presentation. Um, again, yeah, thanks for being here because we, we know everything was a little bit messed up on your flights. Just a couple things that I, I want to comment on. I really liked why you picked the lot. You know, you had some, some options between lot one, two, three, say, and, and you did some really good research on that. I think that was, you were probably one of the teams, only teams that we've seen that. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and you had good supporting documents for that. Um, the graphics I thought were really good. I liked your location and movement graphic. Kind of looked like a compass. Um, the energy simulation one was also pretty neat. The QR code, when, when we first got the presentation, first thing I did was try and scan it. It, it did not work. So it, it, obviously it's up and running now. I mean, just tried it on the phone. So that was awesome. What you guys have up there is great. But yeah, it, it didn't work for the, from the beginning. So, and then one question, uh, talking about the basement finish, you're saying it's uh, semi-finished. Layout, you're showing just about half that basement. Did you have any other options figured for that or talk about your semi-finish? Was it just rough ends or drywall? Where were you going with that? Th thank you for the question. With this, we have assessed three alternatives that we can do with it. However, ultimately, it comes to the home buyer's op options that they would like. So what we are presenting is just one of the many options that you can do in this open layout. The walls don't exist. We are just providing the plumbing stub ups and general electrical up to sheetrock stage. So that allows us to actually fully enclose and insulate the basement area. However, uh, to the actual option, it, it allows the home buyer to build out at a more opportune time. Okay, thank you. That's all I've got. Again, very nice presentation. Uh, congratulations for at least making it here. I know the struggles you've been through. I know they've said that too, but uh, that puts unneeded stress on you. And I thought you guys really uh, handled that well and gave a great presentation. Uh, a couple things that I wanted to touch on. Your site plan. 
spot on, in my opinion. Um, you could turn that in to Johnson County right now, and they would accept that. Um, your layout uh, was good. Uh, things were strategically placed, so I'm not sure who put that together, but great job. Um, on top of that, uh, your construction timeline I thought was very good. You're starting a good time of year for Iowa because we deal with frost and whatnot. And your completion date, um, if you can hit that target, is good. Um, if I'm going to get real picky, it'd be, I'd like to see it just a little sooner because for us, August 27th, I think is what you had for a date, is about when school starts. And most families will want to move in ahead of that if they can. But that's really nitpicking things here. So um, really good job. Um, how did you choose your, your profit percentage? That is one question I have. Just to step back briefly for, for a moment to your, your previous comment, with that we have our contingency built in of our schedule and we believe that we can finish our home prior to that projected date. And we have acknowledged that the market with the school time is our, our desired market with potential teachers coming in, students, whoever that may be. So we have, we have acknowledged that and, and we believe we can get ahead of that schedule. Uh, to, to your comment of the profit margin, we had a reevaluation and we were actually at an 18.45% profit margin. Our presentation does not reflect this. However, we would like to share with that at this point. So the profit margin, profit margin is, is driven by our ability to, with our, our direct costs, and then from there, our marketing and agent fees remove in our interest as well. Very good, thank you. You guys did an amazing job this morning, and I know you're all really tired and <laughs> stressed, but um, the thing that stuck out most in your presentation you had a, a million dollars you could have spent, but you didn't. And that's amazing. And I think more of our generation needs to embrace that. Um, you're spot on with the fact that we have an oversaturation of very large houses that people can't afford. Um, we have enough monuments to insecurity, and we need more houses like what you're designing. Um, your site work cost was actually spot on. I just did an, uh, a cost estimate for, and it was like, did they cheat somehow? Did they call a contractor? <laughs> um, which is not cheating, it's just good research. Um, and yeah, I just, I, I have the semi-finished basement. Yeah, let people, make it into what they need it to be throughout their life. That's, that's a great touch. And the 3D renderings, that's gonna sell it all day long. Um, despite the fact that you guys, I know, are all tired, you all presenting very well this morning. So, Thank you very much. yeah, congratulations, good job. All right, uh, echoing what everyone has said, I'm at the end of the table here, so not a lot of questions left. Um, starting to feel like you guys, but, uh, one thing I did want to talk about on the safety component, it was really, really heavy on the OSHA stuff, which is great. Um, there was not any mention of NAHB safety uh, and, and the resources there. Um, any comments on that or did you? Ultimately, we are driven by OSHA. We want to make sure our job sites are safe. However, we have worked with our local HBA and we have assessed those uh, safety factors as well, uh, and just not directly related in, in that proposal. As a company, we, we are supported. 